supposed to deal with the President of the United States, but back 150 years ago, they formed the, the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And through the Bureau of Indian Affairs, that's a subsidiary of the federal government that deals with primarily Indians. It's through the, the Interior Department. The Secretary of Interior appoints a, an Assistant Secretary who do, deals primarily with the Indians, and that's who we primarily deal with. The primary service that the federal government provides is through the Indian Health Service. And they provide the clinic here that provides uh, medical assistance to the 10,000 Indians on a reservation. Indian Health Service is a federal program that's under the Department of Health and Human Services and their budget comes to them from the federal government. This is a commitment the government has made to Indians with the taking of their land and their natural resources. So it's a obligation to Indians, just like any treaty that the United States has ever signed with any country. The federal government provides services or grants or a Native American graves and repatriation program. They did provide money, for instance, for a language program. They did provide money for this museum operation for a while. Now it's a tribally run museum with tribal money. The way that they're helping our government now is through grant funding. We, we apply for federal grants to help fund some of our programs, to help the needy, to help benefit some of the social services of our people. And we do about half of our budget, yearly budget is, is, is federally grant funded with our different programs. So in the past, we were like wards of the government. Back after the Indian Wars, we were actually prisoners of war, but they called us wards of the government. And the United States government had determined everything that the tribe was going to do, where they was going to move to, how much land they were going to have, and they were actually were, you know, a nation that was defeated by the United States government. And that's how they treated them up to the turn of the century. Then they began to change their, their policy. Right now, the United States government is in a, what they call a self-determination mode with Indian tribes. And what they do is they turn over all the duties that they used to do for the Indians. They're turning them over to the tribes and we take responsibility of that. I'm the chief executive uh, officer or the, uh, the principal chief of the Osage Nation. We call him chief because that was how they were recognized back when the Osages were first discovered. They always had chiefs as the leaders of their tribe. If I speak to government dignitaries, then I'm the one who does the, the speaking. I execute all the laws that this nation makes. Right now we're structured like a three-part government. We have an executive, we have a Congress, we have a judiciary, then we have a special council that oversees all our mineral affairs. That's, that's like the oil business, oil and gas business. Uh, it's because the Osages own all the oil and gas within this reservation. And they, that's part of the government that oversees, that has anything to do with any revenues, like we're in enterprises, we've got gaming revenues, we've got LLC revenues coming in. So this government oversees all of that. Because of the, the National Indian Gaming Act, of the federal government. The Indian tribes were able to do gaming on their, on their reservations. And right now we own, we own about seven casinos with an annual, annual revenue of around $150 million a year. Before the casinos came along, we had a very small tribal revenue coming in, several million dollars, for instance. We were heavily dependent on federal funding for grants and services. And that has changed dramatically since that time. In fact, the, the tribe now provides more money for these services than the federal government does. Well, one of the things that we all like to say here is that a rising tide raises everybody. Uh, the tribe's entry into gaming, for instance, has provided about uh, 1,200 jobs. Most of them are for non-Osages and non-Indians. Uh, so that, those, are, those are the things that, that provide payroll, that supports the economy. 
the total impact of the Osage Nation itself has, was measured about three years ago to be something in the range of a quarter of a billion dollars that we provide in goods and services and add to the local economy. We're the largest employer on the reservation, so again, we contribute to the local community. It's not only Pahuska, but it is all, the entire Osage Reservation. They have created jobs for people to have, and a lot of them are right here in Pahuska. That's probably the biggest thing that they give to us is, is uh, employment. Right here on this campus, we employ about 400 people. And I don't know what the ratio is, but I think it's half Indian, half non-Indian. But it impacts that. When we got a payroll going out every, every two weeks, you know, and that, that's a pretty good sized payroll that goes out that impacts this city. Not only does it impact this city, but it impacts, you know, the surrounding cities that are around here. As well as Tulsa, too, because we've got a lot of people coming from Tulsa and Bartlesville to, you know, to work here. The tribal government helps the city with, they're, they're one of the largest employers in the community. So they bring a lot of jobs, a lot of people in to work with the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Indian Health Service, there's a clinic up there. They all meet here. So that is a, that is a huge benefit for the community because those people all come here to Pahuska to work so when they're here, they're eating, you know, they're shopping. So that's how we benefit, is through the things that, that they contribute back, either monetarily or with the uh, employees that come to work here. In more than 40 years since the United States adopted this policy of greater tribal autonomy, tribal self-determination has proven to be successful. Tribal governments have established developed and enhanced tribal institutions and infrastructure for the health, education, and welfare of their communities, and improved tribal courts, fire protection, and law enforcement to better protect their communities. When tribes are empowered to deal with the challenges they faced, the results are tribal communities that thrive.